I'm Neil Goldstein. I'm the author of several Dummies books, all of which are about mobile development, mostly on the iPhone and on the iPad. I have been doing training for software developers for a long time. I started in the mid-80s actually teaching Apple developers and their clients how to develop software for the Mac, and interestingly enough, later for the Newton. What I've really found is that it requires almost a two-stage approach. In the first stage, you really need to get a basic fundamental understanding of the platform, especially in something like the iPhone, and really understand what some people may dismiss as theory, really is how does the system work, how does the SDK work, and how do all the pieces fit together? There's lots of sample applications out there from Apple that can teach you how to do almost anything that you need to do, as long as you really understand the basics of how the uh, SDK works and what they have in mind and the way they have in mind you should be developing software. I think the iPhone and the iPad are two entirely different devices. So I have my iPhone with me all the time. I use several of the apps all the time. I feel very intimate with it. And um, it's, a, it's almost an extension of me right now. If I forget my iPhone, it's not that I'm expecting phone calls because I really don't get that many of them but I don't have access to the information that I want. The iPad is different. It's a much more uh, interesting experience. And again, where I like it is the intimacy of it. I like looking at my email better on my iPad than I do on my Mac. It's just much more comfortable to flip through it using uh, touch gestures than it is to deal with the mouse and the keyboard. The screen, of course, is beautiful. And it really is good for things like uh, watching individual movies or delivering media. One of the things that's important in an iPhone app is that it's not just a mobile desktop. The user is generally using an app in a particular context to achieve something particular. So the app has to be very crisp with no wasted time and it has to be easy to get the information that you want. Making the user interface do that is extremely important or people won't use your apps. If you look at the statistics, a lot of people will download an app, maybe use it once or twice and then not use it anymore. When I first started writing the iPhone books, it was actually pretty easy. The SDK was pretty limited, and you could fit almost, not quite, but almost everything you needed to know in a standard-sized dummies book. Now that's not the case. What has happened is the SDK has gotten both broader and deeper. The problem now, though, is that you have to learn all of that. It's not quite as easy to learn how to program the iPhone as it was, but it's still very approachable, and it's still a lot of fun. I really like to do it because it creates these bite-sized applications that you can work on yourself or you can work on it with one or two other people. You don't need a huge team. You don't need a lot of funding. You can just go off and write your app and um, have fun doing it. <laughs>